Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. We're going to be talking about when it is, and then we're going to be talking about the blessings associated with keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the punishments if we don't. We're looking here in Exodus chapter 23, which is part of the Book of the Covenant. Now, I wanted to bring this out because it is part of the covenant, which is Exodus chapter 20, 21, 22, and ends there in 23, because it mentions the three covenant feasts of the Lord. Of course, there are seven of them total, but only three of them we see here mentioned in the book of the covenant. So it is these three that are mandatory, one could say, because they are a part of the covenant. Of course, we wouldn't miss any, but we're here in the tabernacle season. So we do want to stress the importance of keeping this festival day. Now, we see these three feasts in verse 14 through 16, the first being unleavened bread, the week long feast of unleavened bread. And then we have Pentecost or the feast of weeks. That is one of the covenant feasts. And then the third one, of course, is the feast of tabernacles, that week long festival that we are talking about in this video. But notice down here in the verses that follow that it talks about this angel of the covenant here, this angel who is supposed to come and help those who actually keep the covenant. That would be the same angel that we hear about over in Daniel chapter 12 in verse one through about verse three, where it's talking about Michael, that great prince who will stand up for the children of the people. But let's look down here in Leviticus 23 when it talks about the statutes. Now we hear about the 15th day of the seventh month down there in about verse 34 talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. And then in verse 36, we see that it is a seven day long festival with a particular celebration on the eighth day of the festival. So let's find out when this is in the year 2024. Now. One of the first things we'll want to do is refresh ourselves in how the sacred calendar works in the book of Enoch. We're in first Enoch in chapter 72, which is part of the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This particular chapter talking about the inferior luminary, which is the moon. And we see down here in about verse four of verse five, how the sacred calendar works. You see that once the moon appears, then that is the beginning of the month. But looking in Enoch, we see that it clearly has to appear first. And that is why there are many who go out and view the moon when it comes to these seasons and these calendars. Now we could come over to truthofyahweh.org and see some who did just that. We can see many reports out from people around the world who got to see the new moon. And thankfully, they were able to report out over here at truthofyahweh.org. And what they reported was the sighting or the appearance of the new moon on October the 4th. And according to Enoch, that would start the first day of the seventh month. So let's go look at a calendar. Now, a great place to get a calendar is over at coachingafight.shop. This is where we sell the celestial clock calendar that we invented here with the help of you guys from this channel. Um, you can purchase this clock over here. This clock does help you keep up with the feast days as well as the other significant times of the sacred year. You can read all about that clock over here at coachingafight.shop. And there's a lot of other things here on the channel. There's a lot of downloads, uh, a lot of uh, free stuff, um, a lot of information as far as, you know, the Celestials. There's a lot of dissertations that we did um, using artificial intelligence to help us do data research from the scripture. And you can find many of those over there on coachingthefight.shop.
thing that's over there is our calendars and other charts but the one we're looking for is for autumn of 2024 so we can click to download it and we can see what the calendar should look like for the fall of 2024 with the sighting on October the 4th that would make October the 5th the first day of the month the seventh month making October the 19th the 15th day of the month which would be the first day of tabernacles now again this is a week-long celebration starting on the 19th and it will last all the way until the 25th of October, which would be Tishri 21. And then we have the eighth day celebration on Tishri 22. That would be October the 26th in the year 2024. Now, as far as those who want to know what days to take off, it would be October the 19th would be a day that you would take off from work, as well as October the 26th would be a day that you would take off from work. So be sure to mark your calendars and be prepared to keep the feast on those days. Look for other videos that we have on how to keep the feast properly. But now let's jump over to Zechariah chapter 14 and look at a few verses talking about what happens if we choose not to keep the festivals. We see here in about verse 17 that during this time, everybody is expected to come to Jerusalem and worship the king. Even those who came against the kingdom before the Gentiles particularly are expected to come and worship the king. We see there in verse 18 that is talking about during the Feast of Tabernacles. But we see there's particular curses there in 18 if we don't keep this festival. It says there that there's no rain. And for those of you guys that are not in agriculture and think that this is not significant, you also have to consider that rain is metaphoric of blessings so you could actually be losing out on many blessings by not keeping this festival but then you see that it's talking about the plague down there as well which reminds us of what we read over there in leviticus chapter 26. many of those curses in that chapter may result from not actually keeping the feast of tabernacles this would be a, a punishment these people may get the punishments of egypt So we definitely want to be keeping the festival. So let's look down here in Deuteronomy chapter 16 to see about the blessings associated with keeping this festival. It refreshes us on some of the rules here when it's talking about rejoicing there in verse 14. We see that that's particularly important when it comes to this festival rejoicing. We read over in Leviticus 23 that we're rejoicing with palm branches. But then you see there in verse 15 that it is the result of keeping the Feast of Tabernacles that our blessings are to increase. He says by doing this we'll get an increase in our blessings as well as blessing the works of our hands. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, letting you know when it is and why we should be keeping this festival. Look for other videos that we have on the subject and make sure you subscribed so you can see other videos as they come out. And don't forget to go back over to coachingthefight.shop, checking out all the free stuff and information that we have over there including the celestial clock calendar and i look forward to hearing from you shalawama